It is the day the panelists select their three specialist bowlers for our ultimate T2011. They have already picked their openers and batsmen three to five, and now there are six bowlers remaining from which to select three. Here are the list Lassit Malinga, Dale Steen, Mitchell Stack, Jaspreet Bumra, and two spinners, Sunil Narayan and Rashid Khan. A quick reminder of the players chosen by the expert panels so far. Chris Gale and David Warner as the openers, and Virat Kohli, A.B. de Villiers, and M.S. Dhoni as the players for batting positions 3-5. to five. Remember, you can help select the Sportsmax Ultimate T2011 by logging on to www.sportsmax.tv slash ultimate and selecting your team. Lance, George, did any of you select a bowler from outside the panel's final six? No. George? No. Lance? Um, no, I think... Uh, no, I didn't. I think the three I have are in the six. Well, I definitely did, and y'all are in for a surprise. But I don't think if y'all didn't select a bowler, <laughs> oh, which means mine didn't make it. For Lance, sure. Thank Lance, thankfully. <laughs> Lance, you continue. Take it away. <laughs> All right, let's welcome today's panel. Former West Indies fast bowler and esteemed commentator Ian Raphael Bishop. Ian is preparing for the Caribbean Premier League, of course, which starts on Tuesday in Trinidad and Tobago, where he's from, of course. We also have regional cricket umpire Chris Taylor and sports columnist Zahir Clark. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to the Sports Max Zone's Ultimate T20 discussion. Ian Bishop, great to have you on this discussion. We remember you being a part of the, uh, was it the ODI or yes. the test, test discussions? ODI. And we certainly um, welcomed your input. Let me get a quick comment from you first, Ian. On the six that we've decided on, or your panel has decided on. Thanks for having me, Lance. It's great to hear your voice once again. It's always very welcome, the dulcet tones. And I do remember my last interaction. I was battered and bruised for weeks afterwards with oh, yeah. vitriol that came my way for my selections. Wow. Um, look, I, I think this is a very, very difficult job given the quality of the players that we have to choose from. And so viewers must understand that whoever is discarded is not because they're not good. It's just that there is someone so much more superior because they're all great. All right, uh, Zahir, you weren't a part of the first discussion yesterday, were you? So um, the six was decided without you. Um, I know you'll have an input in the overall decisions though, but what are your thoughts on the six that we're left with? Um, the six that we left with here um, is an exceptional six. Um, I really love the, the mixture of the fast bowlers and the spinners that we have here with persons like Khan and Narayan who have distinguished themselves in the spinning department as well as we have these fast bowlers with these different actions, the slinging actions, the left armor, like someone like Stark, um, someone like Malinga, someone like um, Bomra who, who has an awkward action and even Stein, one of the most consistent bowlers we have seen. Uh, and who came in a reckoning when we were looking at the test squad. Um, it's an exceptional list here, and I think we have gotten it right in this final six, for sure. All right, Chris Taylor, <laughs> we discussed yesterday the fact that a lot of coaches and uh, captains and team strategists in T20 cricket like to go for slower bowlers. The more pace you take off the ball, the more difficult sometimes is it for batsmen to, to flourish and to score at the run rate that they want. Um, we have three to select from six bowlers here. Um, is it out of the question for us to end up with two spinners and a pace? No, certainly. I, I don't think it's out of the question at all because the, the, why we thought that this section would be so interesting is when you look at the impact players that are yet to come, um, what do they offer? When you look at them, there's a lot of pace options in those impact players to come, the likes of Russell, Pollard, Bravo. So. Um, who very well might all make the list or might very well be pushing hard for a place. So when you think of that, your, your, your mindset might actually be leaning towards two spinners in this category because you know that the pace options to come can balance the attack. Um, but I think just like what the other two gentlemen said, I mean, it's a strong, it's a strong six. Um, it all depends in T20 cricket in terms of you mentioned the coaches. What is your strategy? Um, how old you want to go? Where will you put emphasis? Is it the first six overs? Is it the middle overs? Is it the end? And where you want to dominate? So I think that that's what makes the T20 difficult, but very interesting. Yeah, um, Ian, in your playing days, you were a superb exponent of fast bowling. Um, 
is what Chris is uh, suggesting here, um, meeting your fancy, two spinners and a pace in a, in a whole cricket team? I would ask Chris to talk to his countryman, Michael Holding, when he uses the term balance. This is not a skill, as Mikey would say. <laughs> this is about picking your best bowlers. And one of the interesting discussions that will come out of this, gentlemen, is we have crunched some numbers. And spin, good spin, quality spin we're talking about, and we have that here, is almost more economical at every phase of a T20 game than pace, you know, and a lot of people don't recognize that. So, Chris, I'm going to spank you first and say that when we talk balance, I think there needs to be a paradigm shift in terms of whether we pick someone like a Rashid Khan, a Sunil Narayan, Imran Tahir, any one of those. We if we go by numbers, we don't necessarily have to pick a pacer if he's not good enough. Mm. All right, so we start looking at the, the groups then of uh, three as we get ready to narrow the list down from six to three. So Dale Steen, the impressive South African, Mitchell Stark, the brilliant Aussie, and Jasper Boomerang, one of my favorite bowlers in the world. This first three representing a, a, an irresistible looking trio, I would think. Uh, Zahir, you're the stats man. Uh, Dale Steen, Mitch Stark, Jasper Boomerang. Oh, uh, when we look at these three pieces, when I saw this first group, um, I, I, I was losing my mind trying to decide how am I going to pick from among this group. When you look at someone like Dale Stein, when you look at his average, his strike rate, his economy rate, um, his economy rate in T20 right now is best among this group at 6.75. Most of the others are going above seven. But he, when we look at T20s overall, not only in the internationals, he's exceptional. Even when we look at the internationals, Stein has been one of the most consistent pacers. And when I was looking at some metrics that I was looking and distilling some of the stats, I realized that he was in the top three for four of the five metrics that I was looking at um, amongst these six bowlers. So he's a, a top choice there. For me, um, Jasper Boomerang, for me, I think he's, he's one for the future and one will might rival um, Lassit Malinga when it comes down to being one of the best fast bowlers of all time in T20 cricket. And Mitchell Stark, the wicket taker, the one person I think was the best wicket per inning ratio here among these bowlers when it comes to T20. He's one that goes for wickets and goes for wickets. So his strike rate is exceptional and he has a high ratio for wickets. But the body of work is something that I'm concerned about with Mitchell Stark. Yeah, Ian Bishop, three fast bowlers that are really, really impressive. I kind of accepted what uh, Zahir just mentioned about Jasper Boomer being one for the future because he does look as if he has so much more to offer in the future, even though what he has given us today is, uh, to date is, is still pretty solid. Your thoughts on this three? Yeah, um, Boomer for me has the ability to bowl brilliantly in every phase of the game. You put him in the power play, he's brilliant there. You put him in the middle overs, he can get wickets for you there. Then you put him at the end, and he is the clone, the understudy of Lasset Malinga, who for me, let me let me not go there because I'll give away the next section if I comment on that. <laughs> um, Stain, though, for me, doesn't, while his numbers are excellent, um, I found that coming down towards the, the, the back end, he didn't always show me the control to bowl and the skill to bowl at, let's say, a death portion of the inning. So I think there's a slight little tick that I would put against him there. Uh, when I compare him to Mitchell Stark, I agree with I, that he hasn't played as many games as I would like to see him play to pick one of the best in the world. I think there needs to be a larger body of work. Mm. All right, Chris Taylor, um, I look at Mitchell Stark and I see that in T20 internationals and in overall T20s, he's below 20 in his averages, 18 in one and 17.66 in the other. Very, very impressive for a man who bowls at his pace. Yeah, I think the advantage that Mitchell Stark would have in this trio is that he is left-handed, so he adds some variation to the attack. When you, As we spoke about him, the impact players to come, all of them are right-handed, so there is some variation. I think that goes big in his corner. I definitely agree, though, that Mitchell Stark, as you said, with just 94 games, um, you would have liked to see more in terms of a body of work over a career to really, to really judge. When you think about that, he, in 2012, he was the second highest um, wicket taker in 2012 in T20 cricket. 
And eight years on, he still only played, as you said, 94 games. It shows something. But he does have that added pace about him, Mitchell Stark, which, you know, and he does swing the ball. He can bowl at the death. So he does tick the different sectors of a T20 match. I certainly agree with Ian that, um, you know, that Dale Steyn doesn't do very well after the first eight overs or so on. He, in those initial four overs, if he has the ball, he swings the ball a lot. And that's why we said it depends on where you're looking to balance your attack. Are you looking for, you need a bowler for the start, do you need a bowler for the end and the middle as well? Um, Dale Steyn, as you said, doesn't tick all the boxes even though he's impressive and probably has the best economy rate of fast bowlers um, playing over 100 games. Um, really amazing with 6.75. Um, my thing with Boomer, I, I hear everybody on that, and I do think that Boomer can bowl in any part of the innings. But I think <laughs> it sounds bad to say, but I would say he's a, a watered version of, of Malinga. I heard, I know Ian <laughs> aligned him with Malinga. Um, but I just don't think Boomer's stats are... Yes, he's done well. He's never taken a four-wicket haul or above yeah. versus a man who has taken 15. Boomer has played 160 odd games. He doesn't have the best economy rate of the bowlers we're talking about at over seven runs. He, do, he has a worse strike rate out of these bowlers that we're talking about here. So um, when you actually look at the stats, you say, yes, he's very useful over the 20 overs. But is he the best in any of the categories? Mm. Stan Stark. Bumrah, the three that we've looked at for the first group, uh, the second uh, group coming up. And uh, that discussion, I think, Mara and George will be just as riveting. Well, first of all, before we go to the break, Chris, I actually disagree that um, Bumrah is a watered-on version of Lasit Malinga. And maybe that just gives away that he was one of the bowlers that I selected. I actually take serious offense with you calling him a watered-on version because I think, one, he's very athletic, and two, um, performance-wise, we do see a lot of um, a lot coming from him in the future, and even now, based on what he has performed. But anyways, the discussion has just gotten even more exciting. Of course, I'm inviting um, all our viewers to join in and sit, put your votes because, of course, are we going to keep just Preet Bumrah or does the panel have the say and cut him? You'll only know after the break. Stay with us. is today selecting their three specialist bowlers for our ultimate T20 team. The online votes have been coming in. Lasit Malinga is at this stage the people's choice with 19.57% of votes. Sunil Narayan has 18.84, Jaspreet Bumrah 15.22, Rashid Khan 12.32, Dwayne Bravo 10.14, Dirk Nans 5.80, a percent of the votes while Mitchell Stark and Samuel Badri are locked on 4.35 percent. So four of the top six online are similar to the selections of our panelists. Let's get back to the discussion then. George Davis has the final three bowlers. All right, so let's see this list of three. A very short list, but some outstanding names. Lasit Malinga, the Sri Lankan. Sunil Narayan, no need to say where he's from. And then Afghanistan's finest, Rashid Khan. Ian Bishop, I come to you for your assessment of these three. Well, I, I want to start off with Lasset because Lasset walks into the team for the greatest T20 bowler I think we have had. And I, I take a program to Chris Taylor's description of Jasper Bumrah as a watered-down version of Lasset Malinga. Because... <laughs> And I'm only joking with Chris, obviously, but there's some seriousness there. Lasset has been the, one of those mentoring Jasper Bumrah. And if we look briefly at Jasper Bumrah, any stage that he comes on in a T20 game, he impacts the game. And people are very wary of him at any stage. But uh, Malinga is number one for me. Sunil Arayan, here's my concern, my one concern. In the last maybe three or four years, Sunil Arayan as a bowler has 
not been as potent since he's had to remodel his action. But prior to that, he almost changed the way spinners impact a T20 game. So the difficulty is knowing which Sunil Narayan are we looking at. Sunil Narayan, the all-rounder in the latter two or three or four years, or prior to that remodeling of the action. Rashid Khan, brilliant. Bowling at any phase of the game. So this is another difficult choice. All right. Zaheer, let me hear you on these three. Well, I'll, I'll just pick up from where um, Ian was talking about regarding Sunil Narayan, and he's correct. Because when we look at Sunil Narayan, before he remodeled his action, um, after 2015, before then he was averaging 15.83, um, and his strike rate then was at 17, and his economy rate, which was the important thing, was at 5.46. Since he has remodeled the action, um, his average has gone up to 24, and his strike rate, his economy rate has gone up to 6.46. And a part of the problem, part of the issue is that that carom ball, before the remodeled action, the carom ball is the most successful ball for him. No, since his model is remodeled action, the current ball is not getting as much turn as it used to get before. And as such, the, the key delivery for him right now is the off break. But what he has maintained overall over the, over the whole time is that he's the best defensive bowler. And th th this thing that Badre took up where you bowl flat, fast, and shorter than most of the other bowlers. This is what we are seeing from the Sunil Narayans. Rashid Khan is also bowling. Because if we will look at the bowlers who bowl like over 1,500 balls um, since um, 2015, or even if we look for 2,500 balls for T20 career, we will see that Narayan is the one that holds it back of the length further than most of the other bowlers. Keeps it flat. He's not bowling short, but he's bowling in that good area, back of the length. And as such, batsmen can't get him away. And that's the reason why he's one of the most economical bowlers. And I, I, a quick word from you, Zaheer, on Malinga, of course. Oh, Malinga. Um, he's the person that I usually say makes fast bowling in T20 to look easy. And this is arguably the hardest job. And he's very effective in those two areas when we look at in the death and also in the power play region. And one important stat, two important stats I want to point out. The success rate with this Yorker, which is that key delivery, is 63%, which is the best um, for everybody in T20 cricket. And also when most other bowlers, when they miss their York and bowl a full delivery, and persons are getting 10 and 11 runs per over of them with those deliveries, he is getting 7.5. So even when he misses his deliveries, it's very hard for a batsman to get away, get him, get him away. And that's one of the key things for him. And Rashid Khan, top notch. He's, all, he's going to be an all-time bowler for me. Your perspective on this list of three, Chris? Well, needless to say, this is this is actually my three. I, I agree with a lot of the things that have been said so far. The thing with Sunil Narayan um, that, that I think is something that must be really commended is his resilience, his ability to still perform at a high or the highest level, um, considering he's gone through two or three uh, remodels of the, of the action. Um, in 2017, to think that in the calendar year, he took over 60-odd wickets. Um, he was second or third in the list. He was a 2018 IPL Player of the Year. So, I mean, those have come since the remodeling of his action. Um, and I agree that obviously the carambal is not what it used to be. But as you say, if, you, if you're looking at a body of work and the fact that he has gone through so much, to still be able to break records, maintain that ability, I mean, 6.02 is the second best strike rate of, of all time. I mean, based on guys who have played a certain number of matches. I mean, it's it's remarkable what he has achieved. I think second Tony, maybe Chris Marsantoki or somebody like that. Um, so, you know, really good things to, to say about Sunil Narayan. Um, Lassis Malinga, as Ian said, you know, the best T20 bowler of all time. A man who can bowl between 88 and 90 miles an hour and still bowl a slower ball at 60 miles an hour. I mean, it's remarkable. That his action doesn't change, but yet the ball comes out different. And I mean, Ian being a fast bowler himself will know that that's no easy feat to 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 maintain your 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 accuracy and so on and do all of that. Not to mention the Yorker. So I just think that Lassis Malinga, second highest T20 wicket taker of all time, best in the IPL in 2011 throughout his career, what he has been able to achieve, I think, has really been second to none. Um, and Rashid Khan has only been on the scene for five years, but wow, 250 wickets approximately in the last three years. He has topped the wickets taken in a calendar year, the last two of the last three years. And the one that he didn't, he came third. So, I mean, amazing what I think the, the Afghan can do. Um, just his variation, 
um, his accuracy, his meanness in terms of runs um, with an economy rate of less than seven. I think that, you know, with him and Narayan in partnership. And another thing with Narayan as well, it does give you that option of bowling spin up front. So you don't necessarily have to bowl two paces because you have a bowler who can bowl a new ball as well. And I think that's important in terms of variety. But I think, you know, this list to me, when you consider all facets of the T20 game, these three might be the best three in terms of what they have achieved and what they have done all around the world. Yeah, Chris talking like a confident domino player, turning over his hand with just three pieces left in it because he's confident that the table can't match what he has in his hands. Mariah, you're going to go around the room and get the views from the gentleman. And then, of course, you'll put up the graphics and show you those who have fallen by the wayside. And, of course, the zone team, their picks will also be shown. Definitely, George. Thank you for that. So, of course, today we're cutting from six to three. Importantly, today's final selections will include votes from Tom Moody and Vernon Springer, who were on yesterday's show. It's now time for Chris, Eon and Zaheer to cast their votes. Let the process begin. So here today I begin with you. Who will be the three bowlers that you go forward with? Well, my three is going to be simply easy. I'm going to go with a man who has bowled over 53% of his, his overs in the power play and the death. As a spinner, Sonny Lorraine. I'm also going to go with Rashid Khan, the master of the middle overs for me, and as well as Lassit Malinga, who is the best bowler of the Yorker in T20 cricket. All right, I move along now. Chris, tell me your three bowlers. The same, the, the same latter three in the, in the second draw. I just think Sunil Narayan, as I said, the body of work that these three guys have done. Sunil Narayan, Rashid Khan, and as you said, the tenure of Rashid Khan's career um, has not been as long, but he has been consistently the best throughout his throughout his time there. Um, and Lassis Malinga, I think he has, he has never dipped. Um, I just want to say that I think that just the South African Imran Tahir um, deserves a, a mention as a man I think could have certainly have been in this final six in terms of debate. Um, and I'm lucky for him to, to miss out. But those are my three, Khan, Narayan, and Malinga. Ian, are you on the same page as your other two panelists? Or who will be your three as you move forward with them? Yeah, I, unfortunately, I'm on that same page. As much as I dislike Chris's description of, of uh, Jasper Bumrah, which yes, I want to go I on agree. record as saying I, I totally disagree with it, so we, we agree there. You and I agree on that. <laughs> no, I can't go past Lasset. Um, that, that is no debate. Uh, because of Narayan's huge work over a long period of time, in spite of the last three, four or five years, I want to say that he changed the face of spin bowling in T20 cricket. He gets in on the back of that. Forget his batting. We're not considering that. And Rashid Khan, simply because of the work that the leg spinner uh, puts in and his sheer numbers. So those are my three in concordance with my two colleagues. All right, so we're definitely going to give our producers some time to tally up the votes. Of course, they're working hard behind the scenes. But in the meantime, let's take a look at what my colleagues decided to pick, the zone team. We went with Lasit Malinga, Sunil Narayan, and Oh my God, so that means other people chose Jasper Bumrah, just like myself, Lance what? and George. Y'all on your own. That just means the rest of the zone team thinks the same like me. I went for Mitch Stark, but there you go. <laughs> I, I had Bumrah as well. I had Bumrah, Malinga, and um, Khan. Oh. Yeah, Rashid Khan. Well, I'm actually very satisfied with um, what we selected today. Let me ask Ian. Ian, what do you think about the picks that our zone team made? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the right person here. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, listen, I deliberately left out Chris because I don't need to hear any more watered down descriptions. So, Ian, it's, it's between you and I. <laughs> yeah, there, there's, a, there's a, a sports show that shows on American television where we have a panel like this. And when you don't like as a host, you yes. have the option of muting 
a person right. Chris would have been muted five <laughs> minutes into the show. But look, just to stress again for our viewers, the last six there are excellent. When you can leave out Samuel Badri and, and as you said, Imran Tahir and a number of other Shahid Afridi, maybe as an all-round cricketer, but you're looking at longevity, for example, um, it tells you the quality of this selection here today. We cannot quiver if Bumrah has been selected um, by yourself and a number of the other viewers because when I look at Jasper Bumrah at close quarters, whenever he comes on to bowl, batsmen start thinking differently. They start thinking, gosh, let me survive. Let me not give him a wicket because yeah. of his sheer quality. So I can't quiver if people want Bumrah in the final three. I would ask the here to comment, you know, based on what we picked and hope that time runs out when it's time for Chris to comment. So here, what did you think about our picks? <laughs> um, there, there are good quality picks and I can understand why a lot of persons go for Jasper. Um, as Ian said, Jasper is an outstanding bowler in all three phases. And if when we contextualize um, the bowling and look at the bowling, depending on the over that is being bowled um, across the world for a particular year, we look at Jasper Boomer since I think around 2015 or thereabouts. His bowling um, is a true economy rate. He, he gives off gives off I think 1.07 less runs per over compared to bowlers who bowl similar overs in a T20 match. And he's among the best for fast bowlers because the persons who usually dominate this metric is usually the Sun Sunil Narayan and the Rashid Khan. So I can understand why persons are going for Jasper Boomer. But for me, I had to go with um, Malinga and Rashid Khan because when we look at the top of the list for these, a lot of the metrics, Rashid Khan and Sunil Narayan are, 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 are much better um, for me than, than Jasper Boomer. Chris, I know your comments on Jasper Boomer. What about the other two? Are you satisfied? Well, certainly, yeah. I, I picked them straight up. Um, I just think, as you said, um, no knocks to no knocks to Boomer. I would love to discuss him in another five to ten years um, and see where he's at at that point. I certainly agree with Ian that he has shown all the qualities. I mean, yes, he is unorthodox in his ways, but certainly effective. Um, but I just don't think we're discussing, um, you know, the best of all time. People who have put together the entire body of work, and yes, people don't want to get out of. I mean, against him, I think it's the same for Lassif Malinga. People right. don't want to get out either. Yeah. But yet he has taken 15 four wicket tiles or more. So, I mean, you know, there's a certain aspect that I think that Boomer falls short in. Nothing, I mean, to take away from his quality yes. as an international cricketer. But I just don't think he gets into the best of all time yet. All right, Chris. So our producer, Ricardo Chambers, is ready to reveal the, what you and your, the rest of your panelists voted for. Let's take a look. We remain with Lasit Malinga, Sunil Narain, and of course Rashid Khan. I just want to remind you that Tom Moody and of course Vernon Springer, both of them, they selected Mitchell Stark and Lasit Malinga. And of course there was a split between uh, Khan and Narain. And their votes would have been included in the votes of all the panelists. George and Lance, we see the panelists' votes now. Any changes? Anything you would have done differently? At the top of the discussion, the panelists sung the praises of having two spinners, of, of having quality spinners. Yeah. And Bish gave the numbers in terms of the statistics and the effectiveness of spinners in this format. Based on the quality of the spinners chosen, I, I, would, I, would, I would decline an invitation to argue against these two spinners being stuck into the ultimate T2011. And of course, no person, sane or otherwise, can argue against the selection of Lasith Malinga for any T20 selection of note. So I, I, I'm never happy when I don't get my way, but I'll abide by what has happened because what has been selected, the men that have been selected, make sense. Lance? Satisfied, right? Yeah, reasonably satisfied. I had Boomer instead of Narain, but Narain's, Narain's overall numbers, really, really substantial. Um, I do take the point that was made earlier on by both Ian Bishop and Zahir yeah. that Narain's numbers post his um, remodeling of his action are a little down from, from previously. And maybe that, you know, fed into my analysis a bit. But I can't complain if, if, if Narayan gets in ahead of Boomerang. I, I did 
say at the top that there are spin bowlers, quality spin bowlers, who create huge problems for uh, T20 batsmen when you know yeah. they are looking for quick runs and so on. So uh, at the top, as George mentioned, we did put it there that it is possible that you would want two spinners and, and just one pace in the three. And that's what, what happened. Well, we're out of time. That's it for today's Ultimate T2011 discussions on the Home of Champions. Thanks to today's panelists, Ian Bishop, Chris Taylor and Zaheer Clark. We will be back tomorrow to have what we expect will be a very exciting Impact Players discussion. See you tomorrow.